Arthur Axmann was the German Nazi national leader of the Hitler Youth from 1940 to the war's end in 1945. He was the last living Nazi with a rank equivalent to Reich for one quarter rare. Early life, Axman was born in Hagen on February 18, 1913. In 1928, he founded the first Hitler Youth Group in Westphalia. He became very active in the local Nazi party. Thereafter, he studied law at school. Nazi career, in 1932. He was called to be a right leader of the Nazi party to carry out a reorganization of Nazi youth cells. In 1933, Axman became chief of the social office of the Reich Youth Leadership. He directed the Hitler Youth in state vocational training and succeeded in raising the status of Hitler Youth agricultural work. Equals war service equals, he was on active service on the Western Front until May 1940. In August of the same year Axman succeeded Balder von Schirach as Reich Youth Leader of the Nazi Party. In 1941, he was severely wounded on the Eastern Front, losing an arm. On January 4, 1944, Axman was awarded the German Order, the highest decoration that the Nazi Party could bestow on an individual, for his services to the Reich. He and one other recipient, K. Heil, were the only holders of the award to survive the war and its consequences. All other recipients were either awarded it posthumously, or were killed during the war or its aftermath. During 1945, Axman was pressured to let young women be conscripted into combat roles for the last defense of Germany. Although Axman had permitted young boys to fight in the final days, he refused to allow girls to fight. He stated, Women bring life into the world. They do not take it. In the last weeks of the war in Europe, Axman commanded units of the Hitler Youth, which had been incorporated into the Home Guard. His units consisted mostly of children and adolescents. They fought in the Battle of Silo Heights and the battle in Berlin. Equals last days in Berlin equals, during Hitler's last days, Axman was among those present in the far one quarter of bunker. On April 30, 1945, just a few hours before committing suicide, Hitler signed the order to allow a breakout. According to a report made to his Soviet captors by Obergruppen and Führer Hans Rattenhuber, the head of Hitler's bodyguard, Axman took the Walther PP pistol which had been removed from the room in the Führer bunker by Heinz Ling, Hitler's valet, which Hitler had used to commit suicide, saying that he would hide it for better times. On May 1st, Axman left the far one quarter of bunker with SS Dr. Ludwig Stumpegger and Martin Bormann as part of a group attempting to break out of the Soviet encirclement. Their group managed to cross the river Spree at the Weirdendammer Bridge. Leaving the rest of their group, Bormann, Stumpegger, and Axman walked along railway tracks to Lata railway station. Bormann and Stumpegger followed the railway tracks towards Detonis station. Axman decided to go in the opposite direction of his two companions. When he encountered a Red Army patrol, Axman doubled back. He saw two bodies, which he later identified as Bormann and Stumpegger, on a bridge near the railway switching yard. The moonlight clearly illuminating their faces. He did not have time to check the bodies, so he did not know how they died. He avoided capture by Soviet troops and disappeared. Post war, Axman, presumed dead, lived under the alias of Eric Seward for several months. Axman was arrested in December 1945 when a Nazi underground movement which he had been organizing was uncovered by a U.S. Army counterintelligence operation. Equals trials equals, in May 1949, a Nuremberg denazification court sentenced Axman to a prison sentence of three years and three months as a major offender. On August 19, 1958, a West Berlin denazification court fined the former Hitler youth leader 35,000 marks, about half the value of his property in Berlin. The court found him guilty of indoctrinating German youth with National Socialism until the end of the Third Reich, but concluded he was not guilty of war crimes. During his trial, Axmann told the court he heard the shot by which Hitler committed suicide. He also stated he had attempted to escape from central Berlin along with Martin Bormann, who he said had died during the attempt. Death, he left Germany for a number of years, working as a businessman in the Canary Islands. Axman later died in Berlin on October 24, 1996, 
aged 83. His cause of death and details of his surviving family members were not disclosed. Portrayal in the media, Axman was portrayed by Harry Brooks, Jr. in the 1973 British television production The Death of Adolf Hitler. See also, Glossary of Nazi Germany, List of Nazi Party Leaders and Officials. Notes. Obituary. References. Axman, Arta, Das kann Deutsch nicht das Entsehen. Hitler's Letzter Reich Ju Gen Far One Quarter Rare Era Net Psych. Koblenz, Bubbles, 1995. ISBN 3-926584-33-5. Beaver, Anthony. Berlin, The Downfall 1945. Viking Penguin. ISBN 0-670-03041-4. Hamilton, Charles. Leaders and Personalities of the Third Reich, Volume 1. San Jose, California, R. James Bender Publishing. ISBN 0-912138-27-0. Leticia, Tony. Race for the Reichstag. The 1945 Battle for Berlin. Pen and Sword. ISBN 978-1-84884-230-4. Selby, Scott Andrew. The Axman Conspiracy, The Nazi Plan for a Fourth Reich and How the U.S. Army Defeated It. Berkeley, September 2012. ISBN 0425252701. 1. Trevor Roper. Hugh, 1947. The Last Days of Hitler. London, Pan Books. ISBN 978-0-330-49060-3. Wistrick, Robert Who's Who in Nazi Germany, Bonanza Books, 1984.